Moving on from working with basic functions, we're now going to start talking about what are called systems of equations. A system of equations, simply put, is when you have more than one item happening at a time. So you're trying to figure out when the two different activities, two different items that we're looking at, share the same input and output values. And we're going to start our study of systems of equations by looking at solving using tables and graphs. When we form a system of equations, we write the equations as if they were just normal. So we have y equals 2x plus 10 and y equals a negative 3x and then what we do is we take them and we bind them together with a brace. This shows that we're looking for when these two things happen at the same time. So our first way that we're going to try to solve these is using a graph and see where the two lines intersect each other or overlap on that graph. So y equals 2x plus 10 and y equals a negative 3x. Knowing a little bit about how these behave, I'm going to set up my axes on my grid to favor the third or the second quadrant because the 2x plus 10 is going to be increasing as it moves to the right a negative 3x is going to be decreasing and the only place that they would ever run into each other is in quadrant 2. So let's set up our axes. Once my axes are established I can graph the two individual lines. Here I'm using a scale of 1 so just put in your y-intercept and follow your slope to graph the first line and then do the same for our second one and bear in mind that this is a direct variation problem. And if we were to graph these using a straight edge, we would find out that their intersection point is at negative 2, 6. Now to check to make sure this works, like we check all of our functions and equations, we plug it in and make sure it works for both equations at the same time. So first we're going to check the red one. We want to know if 6 is equal to 2 times negative 2 plus 10. So is 6 equal to a negative 4 plus 10? And we have 6 equal to 6. So that checks out. Now we're going to do the same for the other equation. Is 6 equal to negative 3 times negative 2? Well, negative times a negative is positive, so we have 6 equals 6. And that checks out. So this is the one point on the entire graph where the two lines share a value. As you go through and get more comfortable with graphing, you'll be able to speed up the process. And right now we're doing this with linear equations, linear functions, but we can expand it out to others. Let's take a look at what this would look like when we start working with a table instead of a graph. So we have a situation here. You have $25 in the bank at the start of the summer and you start spent saving $10 a week from doing odd chores around the house or around your neighborhood. Your friend has $200 in the bank and is carrying down a job but instead of saving money actually spends $15 more per week than what is earned. So when, after how many weeks, are you going to have the same amount of money? In order to work with this, we're going to write a system of equations. So you, your, we'll say y of x is equal to you save $10 per week and you started with 25. Now your friend, so we'll say f of x, spends $15 each week but started with 200. We're going to take these two functions, y of x and f of x, and put them into a table of values. Now building our table of values, we have the single column of x, but then we have both outputs listed in. And we have a set that amount of x's that we're going to use. If we need to expand our table, we'll just move more room to the right. But what we're looking for is when the two columns for y of x and f of x have the same output values. Let's start by plugging in. Start at zero weeks, you have $25 and your friend has 200. 
Now for you, you're adding $10 a week. So you're going to go 35, 45, 55, 65, 7, 65, 75, 85, and 95. We'll finish out this table. We'll see if we need more room. Your friend spends $15 a week. So if you start at 200, let me start subtracting 15. We'll go to 185, 170, 155, 140, 125, 110, 95. We had just enough room here, but at seven weeks, both you and your friend have the same amount of money. So, when do you have the same? Both have the same money after seven weeks. So, going through and working with the tables, it organizes the data. You don't always have to have a graph available. But the graph is nice for those who are visual learners. Let's take a look at what our options are when we are solving these. When we go to solve systems of equations, system of linear equations, we really have three main choices. The first is intersecting, second is coinciding, and third is parallel lines. So with intersecting lines, what are the characteristics? First, there is one solution. Anytime you have one solution with two linear functions or two linear equations, it means that they are intersecting lines. Now, what are the characteristics of these? The main thing is they have different slopes. Doesn't matter how different they are, if the slope of the first function is not equal to the slope of the second, the two lines will intersect somewhere. It's just a matter of being able to graph it or build a table to find out where. In future sections, we will find other ways of solving these, but right now it's just the graphs and the tables. Our second type of line it, line system is coinciding. So here we are left with an infinite number of solutions and this is because the two functions that are given are actually the exact same line written in different ways. And what is requirement for this? That is that they have the same slopes and the same y-intercepts. So if you find two functions that, when put into slope-intercept form, have these features, you know you're dealing with the exact same line and you have an infinite number of solutions. Our last choice is parallel lines. And with parallel lines, we end up with no solutions whatsoever. Now, in order to achieve this, the characteristics are that the two lines have the exact same slope, but that they have different y-intercepts. This will guarantee that they do not run into each other. A situation like this is you and somebody else are on a trip, you're both driving the speed limit, and are headed towards the same place, but your friend left five minutes before you did. So when are you guys going to be at the same place? The answer is never except, of course, when you both arrive finally. But you're never going to run each into each other along the route. So, as we move through, we can graph or build the table, but it's a good idea to have in mind which of these three situations we're looking at. Are we, do we have intersecting lines, coinciding lines, or parallel? The main thing is that these are going to be built around slopes, and if the slopes are the same, what type of y-intercepts we have. So if we can track those two items down, we will know exactly what type of system we're looking at. So, let's classify these systems of equations. We need to know, are these intersecting, coinciding, or parallel? In our first system, 2x minus 4y equals 12, and negative x plus 2y equals 18, Let's go through and find their values or how these functions would look in slope-intercept form. So for our first one, we'll end, we subtract 2x from each side. We get a negative 4x, 4y equals negative 2x plus 12. 
divide by negative 4, we have y equals 1 half x minus 3. For our second function, we get add x, so we get 2y equals x plus 18. Divide by 2, we have y equals 1 half x plus 9. So using these two simplified forms of the functions, we see that they have the same slopes but different y-intercepts. These are parallel lines. Therefore, there is no solution. Now what happens with our second function system of equations here? First, we're going to add one-third x. So we have y equals one-third x plus seven. And we have nothing more we can simplify. So let's move on to the second one. We're going to subtract 3x. We have negative y equals negative 3x minus 4. Divided by negative 1, we have y equals 3x plus 4. So our slopes are different. These are intersecting lines. And as such, that means that we have one solution. Now we have an idea of what we're looking for in each of these and we can start building our tables or graphs appropriately. Solving systems by tables and graphs is one method but it is a very important one. Make sure you understand the concepts here. Go back and review this lesson as much as needed and be ready to move forward.